Okay, so I'm going to take uh, you through a threshold theorem for those people who are interested in seeing in a little more detail exactly how these thresholds work and, and how some of these things are proven, just to give you a feel for the, the type of proof that works in this setting. And um, so the one that we're looking at is going to be one of the more interesting theorems um, uh, coming out of Erdos and Rennie. Um, so what we're looking at is that a threshold function for the connect connectedness of, of one of these Poisson or GNP random networks is the point at which um, the probability of uh, forming a link um, is proportional to log n over n. So if this then tells us that if Pn uh, um, is much larger than this, then, um, so if Pn is, is much larger than log n over n, then we're going to have a connected network, and if it's much smaller than this, then the network um, is not going to be connected and we're going to have different components in it. Okay, so that's the theorem. And uh, what we're going to do is just sort of work through part of the proof, which basically carries the main intuitions of the proof, and uh, the, there's some details that you have to work out, and, and I'm not going to go through all the details, but this will give the, the essential bits of the proof. And so um, one thing we can do is show that if Pn compared to this threshold goes to zero, so if it P is much smaller than this threshold, then there's going to be isolated nodes with probability one, and uh, if Pn... Um, so if, if there's isolated nodes, then certainly the, the network can't be connected. Um, whereas if Pn uh, compared to Tn goes to infinity, then there can't be any components with less than uh, half the nodes. So all components have to have more than half the nodes, and basically that means there has to be one giant component. So the idea here is going to be to show that you know, if you're much smaller than this, you're going to get some isolated nodes, and if you're much bigger than this, you're not even going to get any isolated components. And what I'll do is, is really concentrate on the fact that showing that there are isolated nodes or there aren't isolated nodes is, is at this threshold. And the idea that showing that a component, a small component can exist or, or not exist is, is more or less just a, a, a small variation on this proof. Okay. So first of all, um, just to remind you of some useful approximations of the exponential function, so in case you're... Um, calculus or your pre-calculus is a little bit rusty. Um, so uh, definitions of the exponential function, two forms of that will be very useful in this course in terms of understanding uh, properties. It's going to be one is that if we look at e of the x, we can also think of that as just looking at the limit of a process where we do 1 plus x over n raised to the nth power. So think of this as continuous compounding of interest looks like e to the x. So the limit as n becomes quite large of 1 plus x to the n over n equals the exponent. Another is the Taylor series approximation for um, exponential function. We can write the exponential function as the sum of x to the n uh, over n factorial. <clears throat> so that's another way of, of uh, getting that, and you can go through your Taylor series approximation if you like. Um, but uh, That'll be a useful approximation, and here what we're going to do is, is approximate probabilities of, of these events happening, and then using these approximations, we'll be able to get things back in terms of exponentials and then log logarithmic functions. Okay, so um, what we're going to show now is that uh, right at the point where your expected number of connections looks like log n, so this is going to be the point where um, p is proportional to log n over n, Right? So the expected degree is just multiplying up by n minus 1, or roughly n. Um, this is the threshold above which we expect each node to have some links, and below which we expect nodes to be isolated. Um, and uh, in fact, this is the threshold above which we expect nodes to have uh, many links. Um, and once each node has many links, the, the chance of having disconnected components vanishes. So, so basically the logic is we're going to show that, uh, that, you know, this part of it and, and the rest of it is a fairly simple variation. Okay, so um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the expected degree as some function r plus log of n. Okay, so there's, there's the expected degree is actually some r plus log of n. And um, 
what, what we're going to then do is now let's do a calculation that, of the probability that some node is isolated. Okay? So how is that going to depend on this expected degree? So the probability that uh, some link is not present, so I look at a given node and I ask, what's the probability that it's isolated? Well, it's the probability that it has no links. What's the probability that it doesn't have one of its links? Well, that's 1 minus p. What's the probability that it has none of its links? Well, that's the probability that none of them formed, so 1 minus p times 1 minus p times 1 minus p times raised to the n minus 1 power. So this is the probability that some node is isolated. Okay? And so what we want to do is then show that the probability, if p is small enough, then you're going to have a high probability of these um, nodes being isolated. And if p is large enough, then you're not going to have any probability of this happening. Okay, so the probability that you're isolated is 1 minus p to the n minus 1 power. Okay, so probability that some node is isolated is this. And now from the way we wrote the uh, p, remember we wrote that the expected degree was r plus log n. The expected p is just that divided by n minus 1. So this is the p. So 1 minus p to the n minus 1 is just 1 minus r plus log n over n minus 1 raised to the n minus 1. Okay, so now we've got an expression for this. And now we're going to use our approximation that we went through before. I just told you the approximation for an exponential function. So recall that um, if we have some x uh, running n off to infinity, 1 minus x to the n over n to the n approximates e to the minus x. Okay, so, um, and, and that's true if x over n is, is small, so vanishing. And in particular, what we're going to need is r plus log n to be small relative to n minus 1. Now, what I'm going to do is just assume that that's going to be true. And the completion of the proof here for people who are really interested, um, if r plus log n is large relative to n, then this is a monotone property. If it holds when it's small relative to n, it's even going to hold more easily when it's large, right? We're just adding more links. So that part of the proof is quite easy. So the case that's really going to be tough is when it's small relative to n. Um, and so uh, what we're going to do now is, is look at this. So, so now we've got an approximation. We're approximating this by e to the minus, right? So we get e to the minus um, r plus log of n as an approximation for this. So the probability that some node is isolated begins to look like this, right? And now we've approximated that using our exponential function. So it looks like e to the minus r minus log n. Um, bring the log n out and we end up with the probability that some node is isolated looks like e to the minus r over n. Well, remember, r was our, how much our p differed, or our expected degree differed from log n. Okay, so now we've got a, a, a simple formula for the probability that some node is isolated for, for large n. So if each one is isolated with a probability e to the minus uh, r over n, then the expected number of uh, isolated nodes is just n times this, since nodes are identical in this world. And so the n's cancel out, and we get the, the expected number of isolated nodes is e to the minus r. Okay, now we're pretty much all the way there. If uh, r is going to infinity, if r is getting quite large, then the expected number of isolated nodes goes to zero. If r goes to minus infinity, then that tells us that the expected number of isolated nodes becomes infinite, right? So basically what we're getting here is, is a function of r, if it's either getting very largely positive, meaning that the uh, threshold is, is exceeded by p, or if it's getting very negative, so that p is much smaller than the threshold, then we're either seeing the expected isolated, number of isolated nodes going to zero or um, going to infinity. Okay. And um, so basically the expected... Uh, number of nodes goes to, z isolated nodes goes to zero if Rn tends to infinity, and um, to infinity if Rn tends to minus infinity. So the expected number of uh, isolated nodes tends to zero. If, if that's tending to zero, then the probability of having one has to tend to zero, 
right? You can't have the expected number be zero and have the probability of having one be positive. So, uh, or, you know, significantly higher than zero. So the probability of having one is going to have to tend to zero. And so this tells us now that basically if we're sitting in a situation where um, Rn goes to minus infinity, then, uh, or sorry, if, if Rn goes to plus infinity, then the expected number tends to zero, the probability of having one tends to zero. So basically if P is much bigger than this T of N being um, log N over N, then we've got a situation where the expected number of isolated nodes goes to zero and the probability of having an isolated node goes to zero. Vice versa, if, if it's going to infinity, then an extra step, you, know, you, you play with the variance. Um, you can't get the expected number going to infinity without having um, the probability of having at least one go to, to one. So it's impossible to have uh, the, the expected number go to infinity and, and not have a, a, a probability going to one uh, of, of actually having one. So that's an extra step that I'm not going to go through, um, but it's a fairly easy one to do in terms of Chebyshev's inequality. Okay, so this was just one example. Um, I, I, I don't expect you to digest all of this on the per first pass. You can go through... Um, you can go through Balabash's book in, in much more detail if you want to see one of these proofs worked out in, in full detail. But what I wanted to communicate to you through this um, derivation is just the type of reasoning that goes through. So what you do is you, you, know, you, you want a certain probability. You can get that probability in terms of approximations um, based on exponential functions often. That approximation then, now we know for large n it becomes uh, fairly accurate. And that gives us bounds on probability. So we can say that the probability of something is either it has to be tending to one or it has to be tending to zero based on what these functions have to be converging to as, uh, as, as n becomes very large. And that, those threshold functions um, come from identifying where is it that these, these expressions either go to one or to zero. And you know, whether we're talking about isolated nodes or we're talking about the first link appearing, et cetera, it's going to be a different threshold. And so the, the proofs have, tend to have the same kind of structure to them. They're just going to differ in, in the particular expressions depending on whether we're talking about one type of threshold in one property or a different property in a different threshold. But this type of analysis is what underlies a lot of random graph theory and a lot of the proofs behind the scenes in terms of establishing properties of random graphs in, in uh, large uh, settings. Okay, so um, that's just one example. Now we're going to take a look at, at some other types of, of random network models and other kinds of things that we might be able to establish using the 